on Divorce Court today. Married for just six months, Shawnesha says her husband Greg lies about everything, including his father's death. She says he is a pathological liar and has the list to prove her point. Shawnesha Hill and Greg Hill have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toller to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Mr. and Mrs. Hill, it's been six months. You're married and you're here already. <laughs> um, it's a little worrisome. Um, you have asked for things, uh, some money from Mr. Hill uh, as you go, but I want to know how you got here so quickly. What happened in six months that makes you believe this marriage will not survive? Um, because I believe that he is a pathological liar. I, that's what I believe. Why do you think he's a pathological liar? Well, because um, the first one I would say is he told me his, his father had passed. So he was sad, he was crying, and you know, as girlfriend, at the time I was his girlfriend, and I was trying to be there for him. He's sad at this time. My mother's telling me, you know, he's sad, be there for him, whatever case mm -hmm. it may be. Fast forward to a year later, I'm at a family event, and his father names get mentioned. So I said, oh, I'm sorry about the loss, and everybody's looking at me like I'm the crazy one. Now I'm st standing there trying to persuade them that he's gone. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, his, his father passed away a year ago, cancer, telling him everything. And they're just like, what are you talking about? Where are you getting this story from? I'm like, Greg told me, Nate. And that's what she said. His mother said, he didn't, he didn't die. He's alive. He's living. Greg talks to him all the time. I was, I was confused, and I felt stupid. Mr. Hill, did you tell her that your father died when, in fact, he did not? Um, yes, I previously told her that my father had passed away, but that wasn't my real father. That was like, um, like, he basically raised me when I was younger. So I really didn't have a really good relationship with my father when I was younger, so he came in my life at a young age, so I kind of took it hard. It really devastated me at a prior time, so, like, that's the only person I really knew that was close to me. It seems like that would be something she would under, would have understood that he really wasn't your, you did, you did tell us something that wasn't true, correct? Yeah, that's correct. For what purpose? At the time, I felt like that was my actual father because I really didn't know my real father like but that. But why wouldn't you make that clear to her? Why, why the need to make her believe it was your, your, your real biological father? What, what, what was the point of that? I mean, honestly, I'm gonna be honest, there really wasn't no point on it. It's just how I felt, like, I felt like that was my father. Like, I felt like that was my real biological father. But he father. really Even did die of cancer. No. no. Nobody died. No. I asked his mother, I said, well, is there a person in your, that, that was in, a boyfriend you had that was in his life as a father figure? Did he die? No. Ain't nobody died. Well, tell me some other things that he's told you that you <laughs> later found weren't quite true. Okay, um, I went to work and I was a little tired of him, so I'm like, oh, after work, I'm not coming straight home, I'm gonna go to a friend's house. So I could tell he didn't want me to go, but I went. He kept calling me, I didn't, I didn't feel like answering. Um, when I finally look at my phone, it's like 30, 40 missed calls. I see some from him, some from my mother, so I, I called my mother first. Mm -hmm. um, she cursing me out, what are you doing? You wanna be hanging out with your friends? So I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, what happened? She's like, Greg called me and told me my daughter, she's in, a, she was in, a, she's in the hospital. Why are you not there? So my mother, my mother's thinking something happened to me because he made it seem like I was on my way and never got there. So I call him. I'm like, what happened? What happened? I'm coming straight home. So when I get home, my daughter playing, fine. She's she fine. Fine. She don't look like she had a fever. She don't like somebody that's sick. She jumping around. She's acting her, her, herself. So, I'm saying, so I said, what happened when you went to the emergency room? What happened? Nothing. Did they give her any Tylenol or anything? No. Okay, well, where's the wristband? You know they give you a, um, a wristband when you check into the emergency. Oh, they didn't give us that. So where's basically, he told papers? you he took your, your daughter to the emergency room and he did. I think he did that just to get me home, to try to get me home. But don't Ms. use my Mr. child Hill? as a pawn. What happened with the, with the fake trip to the emergency room? Right, let me tell you what happened. I'm being honest with you. I was watching her daughter. You keep saying that, and, oh. and, and it is yet to happen. So go ahead. Uh, I, was being, I was watching her daughter. She had to go to work. 
and some for she told me that oh I'm at work whatever the case might be but with my problem is that I didn't know she was going to her friend's house prior to to do whatever she was doing chilling with her friend or whatever she called it and her daughter didn't feel good prior to like she already didn't feel good so she was kind of throwing up she was a little sick she was like congested so I rushed her to the hospital because she was already like previously already sick so I took her to the hospital just to see what was going on with her and whatnot and they told me that she had a little cough and it wasn't nothing severe but my problem is why are you not there why are you at your friend's house and you got a situation with how your much daughter? was the bill um, from the emergency room. I mean, the bill. I mean, I used Medicaid. We ain't you didn't had get no any Medicaid. bill at all. No, I ain't paid the bill. We ain't had no Medicaid. What are you talking about, Medicaid? Medicaid. You lying to me right now. No, I'm, oh, I mean, you go to the emergency room. I don't care what kind of coverage you back. At some point, you see an alarming bill, <laughs> and some people, you know, that a third party pays it. This, that, and the other thing. But you see something. You're lying. I understand you have a list of the lies that he's told. Yes. Can I see him? Yes. Now, Mr. Hill, lied about your father dying, lied about how much money you make, lied and said your mother said, I'm going to get back with my ex, lies about how much money he has in the bank account, lied about his father having a large sum of money, lied about a girl he dated saying it was a family member, lied about paying my mother rent, uh, you lied about his taxes. Your lies have no purpose other than you just lie. Don't you, does that frighten you at all? No, I don't feel frightened. Next, did Greg's deceit go so far that he has hidden his marriage to his own family? If the ink on your marriage license is barely dry, but you're ready to call it quits, call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real people, real conflict, real judgments. Divorce Court continues. A lot of the lies that you're talking about on on here, Mrs. Hill, seem also have a lot to do with what he tells your family or what he tells his family. Like, he didn't tell his mother you two were married, correct? Uh, how long did he lie about that? The whole time. He, the day we got married, he told me that he um, told, he, he took his mother out to dinner and told him that, told her that he, um, we got married. And when he told me, I believed him. And every time I was around his mother, she would keep calling me fi um, the fiance. So I, I asked her one day, like, why do you keep calling me now? You know, we're married now. She was like, how long have you been married? I'm like, five, five months now. And did you lie to your mother about, by omission, by not telling you were married, and then lie to your wife by telling her that you told your mother you were married when, in fact, you did not? No, I did take my mother out. I did tell her that, but... Um... Previous relationships in my past, she really didn't kind of believe that I was actually married. I told her a couple times I did get married. She was mad pissed off. You mean to tell me your mother, the woman that gave birth to you, who raised you, who'd known all your life, you went out, you sat her down, took her to dinner, told her something as serious as you were married and she didn't believe you? No. You know what that says? You're a pathological liar because if your mama don't believe something like that, You're a guy known for telling untruths. Is any of this making any sense to you, Mr. Hill? I guess. Oh, Mrs. Hill, you're in deep. <laughs> uh, you say he has difficulty handling money. Why don't you tell me about that? Um, he's, uh, he's very careless. He loses things. He, could, he done lost about three phones already, keys, wallet, a whole check, a ho money, the whole wallet, the ID, my ID, phone, everything. Like, he's very careless. As opposed to money, it's the same thing. If he doesn't lose it, he'll, he'll spend it. But when he um, buys things he thinks he's not supposed to buy, sometimes he'll buy me, buy me things, too, so I can feel better, I guess. Like, oh, babe, I bought you something, too. He ordered something, stuff online. Still ain't come. It's been about two months, three months. No sneakers. Sneakers ain't come yet. I want to know where this money went. Since you say you ordered these things, they Are have not Are you spending money yet. in places or on things that you're not telling your wife about? 
like a couple months back, I had ordered some sneakers off the internet and it didn't come. But on her card, when she was working, I ordered off her card and the sneakers came. But when I used my big account, I guess the sneakers didn't come and I placed the order for them. They still didn't come yet. So. Did they charge you? Yes, they did charge me. What did you do about it? Nothing. Um, no, I called the bank actually and they put in a, a, a claim for it, but it wasn't still processed yet. So I didn't get nothing back on it or return or anything. I don't know. Well, I don't believe me either. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, I mean, he tells long, convoluted stories, stuff that just really doesn't make any sense and really doesn't happen. I, and, and I can see why you're here, Ms. Hill. And, and, and yeah. <laughs> when divorce court continues, is Greg the only one with something to hide? What secrets will Shawnasia's phone reveal? Do you believe Greg will change his ways after seeing Shaneza's log of lies? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. And join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Mr. Hill, I'm going to quit picking on you for a minute, and I mm -hmm. know you're glad about that. I'm going to move on to what you say about Mrs. Hill. You say that she is dishonest when she talks about who she is texting. Yeah. Why don't you tell me what your concerns are with respect to who she's texting and what she's saying? I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I went through her phone. <laughs> now, nah, wait, I wanna tell, I'm trying to tell you what happened. Like, I went, okay, I went through her phone previously and she said that, all right, I don't text boys like that. I don't talk to them frequently. I have male friends. Okay, everybody has male friends. I was kind of being, you know, curious. I went through her inbox and I saw a guy send his private, you know, part to her. And I seen her ex-boyfriend text her talking about, I want to hear your voice. And then it's another guy she had sex with. And I said, don't text him or inbox him no more. She still hit him up consistently three times. A guy that you knew she had sex with? Yes. After you two were together? Yes. Ms. Hill, was there such a person? That was before we were together, but, um, yeah. Okay, I asked for Did he ask you not to talk to him again? Yes, he did. And you continued to talk to him? I said, hi. That's it. Did you get a, a picture of some guy's situation on the phone? Yes, I, yes, I did. Now, who sent you a picture of that? It's a guy that I, that I know around the neighborhood. He sent me the picture. It was very randomly. And what he's not telling you is that I put him in his place. And that was the end of the conversation. He's did not going to say it? that. I didn't see that part. I just seen the picture. I don't know if she checked him or not. I did. I you, know, Mr., you know, Mr. Hill, I, I, there was a time I would have said to her, no man just sends you a picture of his, his nether regions on a humble. But I've been in this chair long enough to know people actually do that. <laughs> Freak me out. I can't call her out on that, but I can call her out on the, you got a boyfriend, an ex-boyfriend, he keeps hitting you up, you ignore him or you check him, you don't say hi. That's an invitation. He's looking for a response. He's looking for some kind of acknowledgement. You don't say hi. You just ignore him. You block his number. Or you say, I don't want to talk to you. Don't, don't text me or don't call me or don't inbox me or whatever you folks do these days. You, you, you got that? Yes. Because that's, that's a solid thing. You marry somebody. You, you put a real tight box around it. I mean, I don't, you know, especially if it's somebody, you know, that you say you're not getting enough sex, Mr. Hill. Um, oh God! I'm gonna be honest with oh, you. Like I feel, God. I mean, like that's how I started. I mean, that's how I told. That's how I started off. Um, I mean, I feel like in our relationship, in the beginning, it was hot, steamy. We used to have sex all the time. But now it's like I basically maybe get sex probably like one time out the week. I mean, she work, I work. We both got a job, and I understand she has a child. I understand that, but how young? She's only two. 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 Yeah. So and I, she works full time. No, she works part time. She works part time. Yes. Mrs. Hill, are you coming in light on the loving? I am. <laughs> and why would that be? It's not purposely, but I feel like we're going on two years. He should know what I, what 
what turns me on, what don't, what I like, what I don't like. What I don't like, he's on me constantly. He's he's on my back. Like he's he's on me. Well, okay, so okay, when it's okay, the I get time, it. I, I don't want you on me, right? I, I want to, I want to lay in the bed. So go if to sleep. he modified his approach a little bit, yes. would you be more this, willing? Oh yes, and I tell him this all the time. Give me some space. Let me come to you, Mr. Hill. All right. Honestly, all right. Honestly, I mean, all right. I got a high sexual. With me, it's like I like having sex. So it's like, I mean. Now that we married and everything, it's like I try to give my all to her, like sexual wise. Like I always want to do something spicy, you know, turn it up, keep it constantly keep it, flowing. Yeah, keep in it the new. Day, you know? Yeah, keep it And fresh. it's like I never had my chance to do that because she always tired. I'm tired. This now I don't want to hear that all the time. Like sometimes, you know, like yeah, just hey, get the in the game with me a little bit. Song. I got you. Yeah. yeah, I got you. I understand. Yeah. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Mr. Hill, yes. the only time I asked you a question and you didn't say to be honest is when you were talking about sex. <laughs> and I know what you were saying about the sex is true. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hill, you're losing your wife. It's hard to live with a man you can't believe anything from. I mean, nothing. You calling about a kid sick in the hospital didn't really go. That tears a woman's, uh, any parent's heart out. You can't lie about that. You lie about grand things, about, about people dying of cancer and not telling your mother that you're married. Or if you did tell her you were married, she didn't believe you. You've got a deep problem there, a deep and desperate problem that you need to acknowledge and do something about because that's why she's leaving. I think she loves you. Uh, I think you're probably a good guy. I think you've gotten stuck. You got a really tangential hold on reality. Whatever is what you need is what you imagine is happening, and you just fantasize about it, and you stay there. Even when you're telling me, when you know you've been caught in a lie, you still conjure up more and more and more, as, as if, if you say enough convoluted things that somehow you lose people along the way, and they won't realize that you're really taking them down the garden path. It doesn't work, and it's killing your wife. Just killing her. Not to be able to trust that when you say, I took your daughter to the emergency room, that, you act, that there was something actually wrong with her. For you to tell that kind of lie is just, it's a little sadistic. To cry and say someone close to you died of cancer, that's sick a little bit. And uh, if you don't see it, you can't recover from it and you need to recover from it. Now you want what for me, $300? Is that what you want? Yes. 350, my bad. What for? Okay, if he tells me we have $350 in the bank account and I go out and I'm swiping away because I think there's money in the account, there was no money in the account, so there was overdraft fees. Do you have any documentation of the overdraft no. fees? I'm not going to ask if you did it, if you didn't do it, because if, it, if you told her something and it was a lie, I believe her. You can't lie about money because money can't survive a lie. It's either there or it's not. It's, it, you, know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't appear. And then that costs you money when you lie about money, because if you have money, you say you have money you don't have, the bank says, oh, you thought you had more than you did. I'm going to take more from you. And you end up deeper and deeper in a hole for no particular reason whatsoever, other than you can't manage to tell the truth. You can't stand the discomfort of, of, of being in a situation that's not going the way that you want to go. You've got to be able to stand the discomfort of, no, baby, I haven't got any money. Yeah, Mom, I married somebody that you, you know, preferred me not to marry. No, I just didn't come on time. Yes, I wish you would have come home instead of saying you, you, your kid was in the hospital, so come home. You've got to be able to be uncomfortable and live so you can be an adult. I can't keep your wife from you, but I can't give, take $350 from you either. If I were you, I would find $350 and, and go see a psychiatrist with it. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so old. Greg and Shawnasia appreciate the judge's ruling. 
and are working to change their future. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.